Hey guys, Andy Shama here from Flow Marching, and today we're talking to a person whose work you've probably seen before if you've been to WGI World Championships recently. Um, his name's Dan Shack, and he works with two independent finalist groups from just 2017, and um, another group that we see in independent open, and we'll see all of these groups at the WGI Dayton Regional. How are you doing, Dan? Good. How are you, Andy? I'm great. Uh, nice, beautiful day down here in Austin. <laughs> nice to be outside. Um, so first off, you work with Conexus, uh, George Mason University indoor um, from Independent World. Conexus is an Independent Open, and then you've got Kettering Fairmont in Scholastic Open. I may have said that wrong before, but Scholastic Open. Um, because why not? Yeah, you design for all of those groups, and yeah, we're excited for what you have to tell us today. Um, so first off, you want to dive right into George Mason. Yeah, so let me start with them. Um, the name of our show, our working title, um, is The Memory Archive. Um, so essentially where this idea came from is a podcast. I um, believe it comes from All Things Considered. It's an mm -hmm. NPR podcast. Um, yeah, that's the right one. Yeah. And it was this whole idea, um, th this woman was explaining how there's this new company called Safe Beyond. And basically Safe Beyond allows you to leave messages to your loved ones after you've died. Um, and the messages are stored in the cloud. And basically it could be, you, you almost time it so it's like your child who is two years old and you're dying of cancer or, you're, or whatever. Um, this is even like preemptive. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're sick or anything like that. But these messages get like released to your loved ones at a specific date. Um, so like they could be 18 years old. We're talking like 16 years down the road and you get like an email or text from your, your parent or your loved one who's passed saying, you know, I'm proud of you, et cetera. Um, so I heard this podcast and I was like, that is mind blowing. And like, um, I don't know if that's good. And there's all like these ethical kind of issues that come up with, um, you know, storing these memories in the cloud and the permanence of that are really the impermanence. And I was like, that's really cool. So the working title to start was just the archive because I really just think that is is snazzy. Um, but for the sake of, of reading the show the first time, I think the memory archive is, is the direction we're gonna keep it in. Um, so essentially what we're looking at is, um, You'll see with the floor, it looks like a bunch of neurons in a brain. So we're sort of constructing this metaphor around this big sort of um, retro futurist aesthetic computer scheme where we're going to have all these filing cabinets. There's actually nine of them that are on wheels and rotate around and they can open and close. And essentially we reveal these orbs that are going to be on these um, these LED lights that are all uh, mapped out and um, – Essentially, these orbs are going to represent individual memories, and each player sort of um, – they, they sort of look like they're in a laboratory, like there's sort of this vinyl white idea happening in the uniform. Um, and then in the back corner, there's going to be this massive prop that sort of functions and does a couple different things. I don't really want to say everything it does and give it away. <laughs> but um, so you sort of see it, it kind of feels like you're in this – computer laboratory it's sort of like futuristic but also um you're you're inside the individual brain so um funny enough this idea before i even saw the movie someone came to me they were like have you seen inside out um i think it's a pixar movie and it's very it's very similar in the way they're sort of conceptualizing memories in a material way um yeah, yeah. so that that's it's really similar to that and it's kind of um it, it, it was validating more than anything to see that that idea had been done in a way that was coherent. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. we could be like, you know, like that wasn't the main inspiration, but I'm going to just use that now yeah, as well. Yeah. So, so um, we, we kind of like have these memories and, we, and you see the memory and you see like these lights and then you're going to hear these little like weird sonic kind of triggers coming out of like the chasm where it's not going to be like this is a memory and that's a memory. It's going to be like more – um, kind of discreet and nuanced and you're going to hear um, voices come out uh, in the soundscape and the idea behind that um, to give deeper meaning to the show and really just to make the show about our group is I, I actually made a memory archive in a Google Doc like I made this live document and I, ha I had each member of George Mason email me individually um, a memory that felt important and then we we plucked from those so every memory that you're going to hear in the show is is one of the members. Like we didn't make anything up. Um, so so really, it's like the whole process to me of the show, um, not only happening in front of your eyes as a performance, but like us developing the show over time. It's all part of the memory archive. It's all part of 
kind of concocting these memories that are going to be important because, you know, you march, it's like you remember those specific times. Yeah. Um, we're trying to shed light on that, I guess, um, in, in the moment and in the performance. So uh, it should be cool. You know, it's an abstract concept. It's like how do you do memory? You know, it's not like here it is. Here's the, yeah. It's, it's yeah. very – uh, it's intangible, so we're really trying to figure out a cool and nuanced way to bring it to a more tangible kind of level um, and, and make make you think a little more. You know, like, are these memories permanent? Why do we forget? Are we meant to forget? Um, you know, which? why do we have the ones we have? You know, because we also have memories that we don't want. So right. there's a lot of questions around that. Um, yeah. So I, I find there's there is some social relevance to what we're doing too, even on like a tertiary tertiary level. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's really cool. That's you know you mentioned how memories are so intangible, and what this does is literally make that something that people can go back to and watch and relive that experience, those memories, and like hear, especially for the members that are marching, hear those things happen again. Um, yeah, it's really they're gonna cool. be hearing kind of each other's story as they play this out. Um, yeah, yeah. Which I think is gonna give them that deeper connection to the show. Sometimes you you design a show and you're like, all right, kids care about this. And yeah, they're like, well, yeah. why? Like, what does this mean? It's like, well, the show's about clouds. Like, why do I care about clouds? Like, why do I care about Nimbus clouds? I don't. Yeah. Versus like, okay, to me, it's like when you get a little more of like a meta practice going with with the group and i think you've seen good examples of that in in history where when you do a show about the group when you do a show about the show the emotional connection comes through the show it arrives through the show it doesn't arrive from this imposed conditioning yeah. that needs to take place and that's just like then i don't need to say like feel this here and feel that there it, it's gonna be there it's embedded in the show so um i'm excited about that aspect of it and it's sleek. It's minimal. You know, we want it to look like it's sort of designed by Apple. We want it to look like it's um, it, it takes place in some unknown future, but it's also taking place inside the individual kind of brain, too. So um, I think it'll be cool. You know, I think the landscape of it all is going to be um, very interesting and unique.